materials that Grace Community School has produced uh, over the years. And we go into what they are because they're uh, actual practicality of how a school operates, how a school works, what it actually does. Not just the idea that it's important, but what it actually does. Grace Community School has been uh, in operation since 1986. Um, therefore, it's clearly a sustainable business model. And that's what we're talking about here, a business model which is sustainable. It is not dependent upon donations from other people in order to continue to thrive. And uh, so, to start with, we're going to start with uh, where pretty much all started. Dr. McIntyre wrote the book, How to Become a Millionaire in Christian Education. This book, by the way, is, uh, sorry, one of the three books that we are going to be giving away to all the people who are able to attend with us. You'll be getting this tomorrow, uh, absolutely free. We're not going to charge anybody for it, so you can take it uh, with you tomorrow. But How to Become a Millionaire in Christian Education was where Dr. McIntyre set forth the idea of importance and how a uh, the reasons why you should start a school. Uh, first of all, it's how to build a school, uh, your own school from scratch, and become financially independent at the same time. So this is one of the goals of the book itself. Uh, how to leave inheritance to your children's children while gaining an inheritance that faded by the way. So it's not just talking about actually clearly taking care of your family, but also what is rewardable by God as well. How to oppose entrenched evil in the world without resorting to politics or to guns. This is, once again, we're talking about the concept of reconstruction from the bottom up. Uh, how to rebuild your society, once again, from the bottom up, so that your children will live in a different world. The theme you've been seeing here is impacting children for the future. And, of course, how to do all the above without personal sacrifice or personal hardship, but actually to have all of you touch prosper. And these, of course, are some of the things that are inside the discussion you're talking about. Uh, so this is one of the first materials we started with, and we'll be giving this away to everyone who attended uh, tomorrow at the end of the event. The second thing we have available is our Reverend Eric Slack's book, A Full Reward, Reformation Through uh, Family Run Christian Schools. It was written a couple years ago by him. And uh, this book will also be given out to people at the end of the event as well for free, so you can read it. Um, a lot of it goes into his personal um, ventures. We, we talked about that before, about calling all the rest and stuff. But it's also discussing this concept of family-run Christian schools. Now, the concept is that you're able to run the school with your family day in and day out. How does that look? It looks like my family does. Where my wife and I go to work together every day, and we're there to support each other all the time. We also control the education of our children. We're not getting off to some other school to do so, but we are actually there uh, guiding their education as they do. And not only that, they would learn a trade. So they're actually learning to run a business. And that's part of what it is as well. It's a business model, and our children also get to learn that as they grow through it. Um, how do I know this works? This idea, this concept of, well, can your kids really get to learn how to run a school? Can they really learn how to run a business? Um, is this really just an idea? My wife, um, when Dr. McIntyre started to start the first school, she was only nine years old. And uh, so she was there at school every day. She helped with minor things while she was doing her normal studies and whatnot for school. Um, and now my wife uh, and I, I got married in 1999, or sorry, 2000. I'm uh, running a school ourselves successfully. So does this family Christian school model actually work in the real world? And that's the idea. We're not talking about theories here. We're talking about real world uh, viability. Does it work? Yes, it does. My wife and I are actually the benefit of this concept that Reverend Slack continues to talk about. Reverend uh, McIntyre started with his book, and Reverend Slack further discusses it in his. And so I think you will definitely enjoy those and get in the vision. This here is practically how to run school. Not practically, it really is. Uh, we had an operations manual before, and then we upgraded it some years ago, and we continue to upgrade it every year as things are done better by us. We learn new ways to do things, things to avoid. And so the operations manual uh, was uh, updated by me, where it gives practical advice, managerial duties, sales, advertising, and public relations, teacher orientation training, teacher's manual for infants and toddlers, three to five year olds, special programs, cleaning and maintenance of a building, other offices, and accounting, and school structure. So in other words, this manual is actually a blueprint of how our school actually operates. This isn't just some ideas of what would be, well, oh, this might be a good idea to do this. No, this is actually what we do. It is so, uh, further we explain this, it goes into so much detail, it actually tells you the steps in changing the diaper. Uh, you don't think about those things, but you actually do have to have policies for everything that you do. 
including how to change a diaper. That's part of the training. And so this operations manual literally is everything we do at the school. Uh, now, of course, it doesn't mean that just because you have the information, you can do it with precision, but it does mean that this is actually the information uh, we are giving out to people, uh, the operation manual, you know, how to actually do it. We don't want people to start from the ground zero. If a person says, I like the idea of running a school, but I really don't know how, and if I just go out and start a school, I have to learn all this stuff. I have to learn what structures to put into place, how to teach my teachers, what things are good, what things are not good. Avoid all that. S skip ahead 30 years. Skip ahead 30 years. This information here, this wisdom, is th over 30 years of successful operation of Christian preschools that, as Dr. McIntyre hopefully overwhelmed you with the actual success of our schools, this is the actual things that you can skip trying to learn for yourself. And uh, this is available to us. Now, we do not give this away for free. And uh, I heard an old, uh, old wise uh, tale one time said, never give anything away for free, people won't respect it. But we do give it away for $100, not because we want to make money off the thing, but because if you're actually serious about running a school, that $100 is nothing in the 30 years of wisdom that is inside the book. It's exactly nothing. And so this right here is what we have available to people, uh, which is also available at the website gcsprincip.com. We also develop not only the operations manual, which handles the structure of the school, how to actually do things, but then you have to fill it with stuff, like day-to-day -day activities. We created just recently the College Can We Get It To curriculum. We have teaching materials. There are over 51 weeks of themed lesson plans, 51 weeks of learning goals. Now we're going to get to what these look like in a second. Uh, paper activities, adaptive letter blends and word reading goals, uh, numbers, shapes, letters, art projects, and 51 art projects, national holiday projects. So in other words, you're seeing this is what we actually do throughout the day, day in and day out. Games and activities so that you actually know what you can play with the kids throughout the days. Uh, how to activity guides, which we're going to show you what this looks like in a minute. And also all the papers that they do, letter papers, number papers, naming papers, color papers, shape papers, even do Spanish papers. So this is all in our curriculum that we have. Now the curriculum, once again, is we actually run nine schools day in and day out, have been for years, off of this curriculum. It is, once again, not an idea of some, some fancy things to do. Let's go make uh, you know, paper mache art projects. No, this is actually things that a school would need to do day in and day out to actually operate. And we make this available to other people. And we do sell this as well. Once again, can't get away for free. People will respect it. For $150, we do sell this to other people. And once again, skip all the years. And this took me years, actually, to develop. And it was all created from the ground up. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. And you'll just hopefully respect how much work went into it and the amount of work you can avoid, which is why we're doing it, to help other people. Here are some examples of the 51 weeks lesson plans. As you can tell on the side, we have the days of the week. There are activities one, two, and three. You can't see it because it's blurry. But there are specific activities that you're given. You don't have to come up with ideas for games to play. It's all there. We have theme weeks up here. Like this one says Outer Space Week. Every week is something fun for the kids. They always have something new to uh, look forward to. It's never the same. Every week is something different. You have a lot of projects. You never have to really think about what our projects to do. Papers. You don't have to worry about where those come from. Special events. If we have any, like you had a dress up day. Uh, we just had a cowboy dress up day yesterday, actually. So kids can dress up things like that. And we have learning goals here. This side over here is all the learning materials. Actually, what to actually teach. So it's, once again, it's not just fun and games. It's actually learning material. What you actually teach. Letters you go over. Blends you go over. Words you go over. Numbers that you go over. Everything is systematically set down and taught throughout the entire year. And you can't, if you follow our plan, our curriculum, produce the similar results that we are through a plan of action. You don't have to sit down and try to come up with all this information. We have it available. This is also in there, all the different themed activities and guides. We have templates already built up, so we've been using like cut out construction paper stuff. Our project cutouts are all there. Uh, black and white activity papers, or activity ideas. A lot of times when you're doing things, like this one was for a uh, Indian vest that you make out of a paper bag. And then, of course, what would you draw on it? So we came up with lots and lots of ideas about giving kids ideas what they can draw on their best and be more creative. We have cutouts, small and large, which you, which you can use for your games. And one very important thing about these things versus other curriculums, because we are not in the curriculum business. There are a lot of really good companies that are in the curriculum business. We are not. 
Ours is about being able to successfully do something and at the same time not kill your budget. So this type of stuff is something that we literally don't have to purchase this stuff every year. Like the cutouts down there, we give you um, advice on how to actually print them on the right type of paper, laminate them, save them. No cost again. Done. You never have to buy this stuff again. Uh, next, we have activity papers. Here's some examples, names, letters, papers, colors, shapes, and Spanish. And take into account that there are 51 weeks of papers and there are 15 papers per week. That'll give you an idea of how many papers there are. 51 times 15. Tons and tons of papers. Tons and tons of work went into all this to make it all acceptable so that every week there are 15 papers a week. You never have to think about it. Special event notifications. We have Hawaii and dress up days. So these you get posted in the offices and on the other side with the handouts. We take those, you print them up, you send them home with the parents, let them know what you're doing. It's already done. Once again, you're starting to, I hope, understand how much work went into this and something that the person who wants to start a school doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. This is all done. Activity guides. These right here are extraordinarily helpful. It's one thing to see an activity guide that says that you're going to play the dive stick ring toss. And it might give you a written description of how to, and it does on lesson plans, give you a written description. But then some people, it's very difficult to communicate in about two lines of text how to actually play a game. So we went further than that because we found out that it wasn't enough for our own teachers for me to go, I know what I want teachers to do, but I can't be in the classroom to explain every single game, every single day, so let's make an activity guide. And work with photos. So every single game has photos and a description more in depth of how to play the games. So in other words, you can give this to teachers and say, I need you to do this. Simple. Photos, description. Moving on from the curriculum itself, we also have a reading program. But that was all the college coming into stuff. Hopefully you get the gravity of how in-depth that is. This is the preschool reading program, which was further developed by us. Once again, there are great curriculum companies out there who do make great uh, phonics-type books. A back of books is one of them that I, comes to mind for the past and used them for years. Um, we wanted to be able to do a couple things, as you notice on these, like over here, says book number one, but at the top, this is Grace Community School. Um, part of that is advertising. We're able to use, utilize our efforts. So whenever these books go home, and somebody is congratulating their child, they go and say, look what my child can read. Where do they learn to read that? Grace Community School. That's where they learn to read that. When other people see it, they'll say, well, I would like my child to read too. Well, you know where to go now if you want your child to read. Huh. Over there is reading books. This is what they actually look like. Over here are what's called the flip books. So the ones on the left here are the ones you have in the classroom where the children will go through them. Uh, unless it's just plug to it, we'll see what else. Um, here's the Phonics Flipbook. This is just for the letters. And once again, a great amount of detail went into these to, in order to uh, do them. You don't have to because they're available. Um, first, it starts out in order, and then reverse order. And then mixed order, and mixed order again. And you see it goes again, and again, and again, and so forth and so on. These books are utilized in order to teach the uh, letters. And as soon as these are done and completed, we also have what's called certificates that go home with each letter group, so AIOU, MRSTV, and so forth and so on. These ones are the uh, reading books themselves. You see that it starts with just the basic letter, and then it goes into phonics. And it says mm, A says A, and A, math. Then it will go on to down here, where the child is going from breaking down the letters to create the blend, to creating just the blend itself. Math, meh, meh, ma, ma. You're learning to read more fluently. And by the end, you have man, Math, mat, mad. And they learn to read more fluently as they do this. But this is not done with six year olds. This is done with two, three, four year olds. These are the number of books that we have for them. So each one of these, this is what they look like on the inside. This is just one book. Now take that, and that's inside every book. So every single book has all those different words in them. And so by the time that they are through with this, they have a very good ground and phonetics and can move on. Now the reading books, this is the breakdown of what that looks like. Inside the book, as you can tell, we did some advertising inside the book. We want people to know that our schools are teaching people. They will communicate that to other people, which means hopefully the community will get the word and more children become literate versus just play. Next you have letter recognition, and this is a note, goes on to blender recognition, once again where they have to, all the flip books we're learning about, this is the test book. Once they, and the flip book can show proficiency, they would go to this book once a week to see if they can actually do it. 
If they can do this entire book without having to stop, or without assistance, they get to take it home with them. If not, they go back to the flip book again for another week, and then try to get to the end of the week to see if they can pass. Now this is how many pages are inside this one book, and this is what all the books look like all together. Now, a lot of work went into this, as you can tell. All the artwork uh, was stuff that I did personally. And of course, all the books and stuff, so don't try to reinvent the horse or the wheel here. That's just, uh, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, it is available for you. Now, besides all these things, we're also, on a broader scope, wanting to promote Christian education, which is what this event is partially about. We also have uh, gone into the world of podcasting as our efforts to further go out there and find like-minded people who have, as uh, Aaron, uh, Reverend Aaron Slack was talking about, the calling to Christian education, and we're trying to search for those people. Now, we do have the Preschool Pioneers podcast, which we recently started within the last six months. We do a couple series on those. The first is Faith, Family, and Education, that my wife and I do, which talks about the Christian family. It talks about education, and it talks about the Christian faith. It's basically overall views and discussing those types of subjects. We have one that I do by myself called Teaching and Managing with Success, where I'll sit down and talk to people about how to actually be a good teacher, how to actually be a good manager, things that they need to think about, things that might help them. So if these people are out there in the world and they're running a school, they need help, maybe they're a teacher, they're having problems in their classroom, I'm trying to, to help them, even though they can't be here, they're trying to help them out otherwise. If they're trying to run a school, they're going to run into some problems, so we try to assist with that. The series of marketing, advertising, and branding in Christian school, Reverend Aaron Slack, most of the headlines that I just kind of tied along. But um, he is our advertising expert that we have on site, and Grace Community School has been um, great in advertising, and he's been the kind of source of that with Dr. McIntyre. Now, this right here is if a school wants to continue to branch out, it can't just sit and not advertise. It needs to advertise to grow. That right there, when we go through that, somebody listens to it, that will actually help them grow a Christian school. It's actually really good content. And then we do the guest interviews, uh, which is kind of more of a broad scope, kind of fishing out there for people who talk about the importance of Christian schools, Christian education. And we also have started another one, Moral Foundations. You'd be surprised how many people, I do this one on my own, uh, how many people do not understand how to teach the Bible. As we were discussing before, when all you have is John 3.16, you don't understand the rest of the Bible verses. So this is actually a podcast which was put out there um, just to, it's just got off its feet, uh, where it systematically goes through one verse at a time and teaches people how to actually read the Bible and teach the Bible specifically to young children. Because people have no concept how to teach the Bible to kids. And once again, our focus is young children. So if somebody listens to this, it will actually learn a ton, especially how to teach the Bible. Uh, we definitely just started this one, which is also new, which is called Easy Chair in Practice, which is a monthly podcast only done um, once a month. But this one goes back to Calcian, R.J. Rushkin, people that might be familiar with him. We are really reintroducing the world, and that's our attempts, to Reformation and to Christian Reconstructionism. Now, it's sad to me that there is a community of Christian Reconstructionists that have a concept of uh, what it means to be Reconstructionist. But most of the people who said they've read Rushkin or think that they are Reconstructionists have a very weak understanding of what that means. And so we're attempting to go out there and promote his materials so they can better understand what that actually means. And this podcast is just promoting calcium in general and rest of these information, things like that as well. And this one we're very excited about. Um, we were, our schools are very instrumental in getting this one up and running. It's not running yet. Um, this is actually called the Easy Chair of RJ Rushing. These are tapes that RJ Rushing did back in the 1980s and 90s. And uh, he has over 400 episodes of the Easy Chair, which are all about an hour long, so it's like over 400 hours of information that he sat down and was discussing things with people. Giant a variety of subjects, but a treasure trove of information for people who want to understand Christianity in particular. This is going to become a weekly podcast uh, on the Christian Reconstructionist Network, and you can go to uh, calcium.edu, it's their website. Uh, if you go to gssprevention.com, you can find information on all of these if you're interested. And then, of course, the last piece here, um, and we'll be done for today, is this. This is something we've been working on for a very long time, uh, years now. In fact, I made that graphic probably about, I don't know, four or five years ago. Probably an update. It looks pretty good. But this is what we've been working on for a very long time. It's called Grace Community School Preschool in a Box. I don't know why I feel like Steve Jobs. This is the new thing. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> but the Preschool in a Box 
is the concept because we want people that are interested in Christian education, and they have the drive, but they don't have the know-how. We want to say, here's all this stuff which will help you. Take this, and this will help you. Utilize the materials. 30 years of experience. Take what we have, take our knowledge, and continue on in your sphere, in your state. Wherever it is you're at, we want to help you. And so the preschool in the box is built off that premise of helping other people. And so it starts with, it has the preschool operations manual in it. I just went over that a little bit ago. It also has how a millionaire Christian education book. Reverend Aaron Slack's book in there as well. The college community get it. Two curriculum is in there. And so our GCS uh, program books are also in there as well. Now, this will not be available for free, because you can't get something away for free, but will not respect it. And the amount of time and energy and 30 years of experience that went into collecting this amount of information is something that should be respected by anybody who is interested in this field. And it can definitely 100% help you. How do I know it can help you? Because we're running nine successful race community schools off the information that is in there. Absolutely 100% true. So, this is to be announced. It will be on our website, tcscrunchy.com. Um, the amount will be far above what all the items collectively put together. We want to definitely make it um, something that is a business interest, but make sure you are also wanting to be serious. And if you, from the old saying, you put your mind where your mouth is, and if you're actually serious about doing this, we want to give you the information that we have um, as well. So that will end our presentation. Hopefully that will give you something to think about. And if you are interested in these items uh, at all, or uh, interested in starting a school, Talk with us, talk with us about our materials, we're more than happy to help you.